So we are going to start this year off by learning about uh, PhotoP. So PhotoP is very similar to Photoshop. If you've never used either one, it's fine. We're going to give you a rundown. So the first um, thing you need to know is that Photoshop and PhotoP are both raster editing software. That means you can edit photographs. Um, you can um, can create logos, however, it's not recommended. Um, for When you're working with a raster-based software, um, the images are pixel-based, meaning you can only make them so large before they start to get pixelated and distorted. So whatever size you make your document, that's it. You can't make it bigger, okay? So um, for the majority of our product, projects, um, posters are 11 by 17, 11 by 14. Um, most of the stuff we do will be eight and a half by 11, which is basic uh, paper size. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you want to make a really large print, you need to make the original print as large as you think you're going to print it. Okay, so we're going to run through photo P really quick and talk about the parts of the workspace. So when you first open it up, you go to photop.com. This is exactly what it looks like when you open it. You don't have to register for anything. Um, it's very similar to Photoshop with a few exceptions. So we're gonna start up here at the top and kind of work our way down. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the workspace. This entire thing right here, this is called your workspace. All right, we have our artboard goes here in this dark gray area. Up here, we have the main area, which includes, I'm sorry, not your main area. Um, they call this up here the top menu, where we have our file, edit, image, layer. This is basic stuff that's in most web browsers, uh, most software that you use, okay? File, this is where you open and export or save edit. Um, some of these tools don't become available until you have a actual um, document on your artboard. Okay, the filter gallery is for editing stuff. This is your zoom tool window. Okay, this is important. If you need a tool or a menu and you don't see it on your workspace, you're going to go to window and you're going to locate it. This is where it should be hidden. Okay, and then more just takes you to um, photo P's uh, shortcuts and things like that. You can change the theme or the color. Um, I like to stick with darker colors. It's easier on the eyes when you're working with imagery to use a dark background. You guys have noticed that Instagram and Snapchat, they've all turned to dark themes or have that option. Um, it's just easier on the eyes. All right, so that's the top menu. The next uh, menu we're gonna talk about is the main, and let's actually go to the toolbar. Okay, so this is your toolbar right here. This area is gonna change depending on which tool you use in your toolbar. And this right here on the left-hand side is your toolbar, okay? So in your toolbar, you have a move tool. If you hover over, it tells you exactly what it is, move tool. The shortcut to get to the move tool is the letter V. That's what that V is right next to it. The next one is your rectangle or your shape tool. This draws shapes. This is your um, select tool. This is one of the ones we'll be going over first. This is your hand tool or your pan tool. This is your another selection tool, your lasso, polyagonal, and magnetic. This is your magnifying glass to zoom in and out. This is another selection tool. This is your object selection, quick selection, and magic wand. And to cycle through those, just use the letter W and it'll cycle through. This is your crop tool, crop tool, perspective tool, slice tool. This is your color picker. So if you wanna change the color of a document or an item that you're working with, you can just drag around. You can enter the hex code. Every color has a code. 
and the number will go in right here. You can enter the RGB codes. Um, I believe there should be, there is not a way to change it to CMYK, so which is fine. We'll talk about that. So RGB is short for red, green, and blue. And that's how our monitor reads colors. When we go to print, um, our printers read in CMYK or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Okay, so um, a raster editing program is usually set for RGB. If we were working in Photoshop, we would be able to change it to CMYK, but for now, RGB is fine. The next one is your eyedropper tool. This is used to pick colors on your document to change the colors, and we'll go over that when we get to that point. These are some healing brushes. This is how you edit blemishes, things like uh, pimples or freckles or wrinkles, remove unwanted objects from your photographs. This is your brush tool and your pencil tool. This is another healing tool. This is your clone stamp. This copies a set of pixels and replaces them. This is your eraser tool and your background eraser. This is the gradient and paint bucket tool, the blur tool, the sharpen tool, and the smudge tool, the dodge tool, and the burn tool, and the sponge tool, your text tool, and your pen tool. This is a quick mask, and we will get to that in a couple weeks, so we'll talk about that when we get there. All right, so with that being said, um, as I was saying, the toolbar changes with depending on which tool you have selected. Right now, the text tool is selected. So up here, it says my the letter T for text. Um, this is my options, my options for my type. I click through here. It gives me all the different kinds of typography that I can choose from. Um, it, I can select, I want to find every kind of text there is, or I can just uh, select color, calligraph, and it will select just that type. If I click comic, it brings up the comic. If I bring select dingbat, it'll give me dingbats. And we're going to learn all about what those different types of fonts are. Um, book, so this is like how heavy or thick or thin the lines are. This is to adjust the size. You can also type in a number, or you can use the drop down arrow and use the slider. I find it's easier to just type in a number. This is to change the color of the type. This would be to justify it, left justify, center, or right. And then this would be um, how the, the type actually looks, okay? So if I clicked on a different tool, let's say this one, notice how it changed. Now I have the lasso selected. Um, it tells you uh, different types of selections you can make. You can replace, unite, subtract, or intersect. You can give it a feather and refine edge. So the toolbar changes depending on which tool you use, okay? So pay attention to that because we're going to need that. All right, so over here, we have a history, swatches. So history, uh, let's open a document. I'm just going to go new. We're just going to, let's see, print, and then create. OK, so if I were to just draw out a shape, OK, there's red. If you notice in history, it starts with when I opened my file. Then I start drawing. Every time I draw, it gives me a new history state. So if I wanted to go back and say, oh man, I need to go fix that rectangle, I will click on it and it'll delete everything after that rectangle. Okay, if I want to go to open, okay, that's one way to delete things and start again. If you make a mistake and you want to go back, just click on your history. I believe this has a certain number that it saves. Um, I would think in Photoshop it's 50. I'm not sure how many it'll save on Photo P. Your swatches are the colors. These are usually colors that are used within your document. So let's just start drawing and see what happens. 
Okay, just kidding. Okay, so if I click on a color, now my rectangle should be teal. It's, oh, I'm sorry, I have a fill color selected up here. So if I click here, all right, there we go. Okay, so these are color swatches. Layers panel, this is a very important tool in Photoshop, something that you have to always be aware of. Um, every time you draw a new object, it's going to create a new layer for that object. Every time you place something on your layer, it'll create a new layer. Okay, you can rename these layers. You double click and give it a layer. So square number five. Okay, so say this was, I don't know, an eyeball. You would name it eyeball. It's important to name your layers so you can go back and find the layer that you're looking for. The next one is your channels. This separates it by color. Paths, this separate, uh, this is, um, we're gonna get to that when we start using the path tool and the pen tool. All right, so if you click here, this brings up some other information. So this would be the information about where your cursor is on your artboard, what color you're hovering over and things like that. The next one is your properties. So kind of the same thing. It talks about the object that you have currently selected. So if you notice every time I click on another one, it changes, it tells you how big it is, where it's located on the artboard. The next one is your brush tool. So when we're using our brush, these are the brushes that are preloaded into PhotoP, which is kind of cool. And we are gonna learn to actually create our own brushes and how to, and we're gonna learn how to import brushes when we get to the painting section. So if I just click, layer is not editable. Okay, so it's not editable. So that tells me, hey, I need to create a brand new blank layer. So I'm gonna click here, new layer. And now I should be able to just start painting. Close this. So we can see what's going on. So you can just start painting. Okay, so these are your layers. Always important to have that open, okay? Character panel, this has to do with typography. Paragraph panel, typography again. CSS, if we were to use to create a, um, a web page, you can create a web page on PhotoP, export it and upload it to a actual website. This would give you the code for that. Uh, this is the gallery. So if you wanted to insert a photograph, um, PhotoP has some stock photos you can use. So if you see, I put this picture, but it's located in between all of these other layers. I can drag it up to the top. Just gotta, there we go, okay. So use my move tool or the shortcut is the letter V and I can drag it around the artboard. All right, so that's just a brief rundown of the workspace on PhotoP. The more you play with this um, software, the more you're gonna become familiar with all of these different things. And the more projects we do, the more you're gonna learn about what each thing does. Okay.